Hi guys, so in today's video I'm going to talk to you about the WebDAV protocol and how you can configure it on your Synology NAS using the uh, Synology WebDAV package. So the WebDAV is an extension of the HTTP protocol with new verbs like lock, unlock, prop find, etc. that allows uh, users to access files uh, collaborate on files and also mount the folder as a um, network drive. So it's a little bit like SMB, but there are some major differences, of course, between them. So usually when you are inside your enterprise network or at home, usually you are going to use the SMB protocol between your computer and your NAS. So you have different kind of server message block protocols or versions. You have the version one, which is old, obsolete, and vulnerable. You've got the version two, which is faster and more secure, but if you can, don't use it. And if you can, just use the, the latest number three, uh, version three protocol, which uh, has encryption in transit so um, it's way more secure and it should be also ha has um, have better performance and it goes on the tcp port 445 and this cannot uh, change now what if you would like to access to um, to use a network drive whenever you are on the internet you know uh, in an other country or you know on a coffee coffee place or anything you have Three solutions you can directly open in the red the SMB service uh, from your NAS to the internet which is a don't do it <laughs> situation because the SMB protocol is a target of opportunity for um, for hackers are uh, they are always you know they like this protocol because they have a lot of vulnerabilities that have been detected over the years a lot of zero day exploits also that can be available and usually when you have a Microsoft environment, it allows you to have a foothold and then to make some uh, lateral movement inside your network if uh, your point of entry ever gets compromised. So anyway, just don't use SMB over the internet directly. It's really, really, I do not, don't do it. <laughs> then the, other, uh, um, the second scenario is to use a SMB over VPN. You can do that. Maybe in terms of performance, it wouldn't be that great because SMB is not that great over the internet and the VPN, you know, it adds uh, an overhead. But in terms of security, I guess it's okay. Now you can have another solution, which is very easy and robust and reliable and safe is to use the WebDAV over HTTPS. So WebDAV uh, is also compatible with NTFS, per NTFS permissions on your disk on the server disk and you can use the HTTP or HTTPS protocol over any kind of ports if you want. So it's very easy to bypass any kinds of firewall restrictions if you ever use the HTTPS 443 uh, port um, because the SMB, you know, it's a well-known port. It does not change. It can be easily blocked by your ISP, by a corporate firewall or, um, or your, you know, hotspot or anything. It can be blocked, so at least you are more discreet by using WebDAV. WebDAV is using two kinds of authentication uh, that I know of, but I think it's more depending on the, your server implementation. You have the basic, which sends your username and password in base64 encoding, which is no, it's not safe, so you should use HTTPS uh, because it sends your username and password in clear text at every request you are doing. And you've got the digest, which allows you to send your password in a hash, uh, you know, using a hashing function. So it's, it's, it's going to protect your password, but not your data. So you always need to use with the basic and digest authentication, uh, WebDAV over HTTPS, never use uh, the normal one. Now, another advantage of the uh, WebDAV uh, over SMB is that you can use certificate so it's easy to ask and renew and you are sure to be safe especially if you are using all the uh, good and new cypher suits and um, and if you're using Diffie Hellman so you are sure that you're always safe uh, so for the, so for the PFS the perfect forward secrecy so that's very good 
And another good stuff is that you can use a reverse proxy with your uh, web dev, okay? So you've got here the SSL uh, termination here, um, which allows the UTM, if you have one, to analyze the traffic for any kind of attacks with the network intrusion prevention system. You can also use the WAF to detect any kind of application-based at web attacks. And you can have a network antivirus, which will scan any kind of file and folders, files and folders that you are putting on your server. I unfortunately were not, I was not able to get the, the ACAR file. So I can show you that my UTM in WebDAV, you know, with the WebDAV protocol, it will block this and flag it as a virus and delete it from the stream, from the network stream. Okay, so I think that's it for the theory. Now let's get to uh, the configuration part. Well, there is actually <laughs> and not nothing special to do. So you've got the HTTP port you can configure, the HTTPS, Anonymous web dev if you want, if you want to have a lot of, you know, uh, subfolders, you know, a big hierarchy in your organization, um, you, know, you know, you in the way you organize your files, the web dev logs and the speed limits. Okay, so the web dev, web dev logs allows you to see which user from where, um, what did this person do with the file, he downloaded the file, he uploads some data and he unlock. So lock, download. Uh, upload and log so you have all the logs of what um, has been uh, what has been doing on the file um, what do we have also here I guess nothing special yes for the logs this is not compatible with a reverse proxy settings for the uh, traceability for the logging because you this is my interface my UTM interface and not my client and uh, this is only with WebDAV. It seems that it's not compatible with Synology. Okay, so that's not really important. Um, now, this is the first implementation. Now, I'm going to show you how to mount the drive. So this is really not complicated anyway. Um, now, there are some important prerequisites with WebDAV, okay? You... Um, when you're using the built-in WebDAV client on Windows 10, it will not allow you to use basic uh, authentication without using a valid certificate. So valid certificates means that the certificate that you're that you're using should be signed by a trusted root or certification authority. Or what you can do also is have a self-signed certificate that you will need to import in your in the Microsoft certificate store in the trusted root certification authority certification authority. So now, as I have done all that, because this one is uh, a self-signed on this uh, test server. Okay, uh, nope. Uh, I'm on local for the for the folder test and I'm going to log in. Uh, okay, so this is the step that you will not be able to do if you do not have a valid certificate. Now let's see. We have the office folder. I'm going to show you what happens when I would like to work. So I have another computer which is an Acer computer, and I'm going to. Um, to show you what happens, uh, you know, with all this collaboration, um, what happens when you would like to edit some files together. So I'm going to, uh, I, I hope this is okay. Yes, it's okay. So now I'm going to open a Word document. Okay, so what is going to happen on the reverse proxy? Now it's opening Word. It's asking for my password. So I have a 401, I'm not authorized, okay? I press enter to log in and then what you will see is I just wait a second okay now you will see uh, pop 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 you will have a lock and I get okay I'm getting the file and I'm locking the file so the lock means that now if another device or user is trying to access the file he will not be able to modify the file like that or to delete the file he will be blocked now i'm going to 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 write on the word i mean this is acer is writing okay eighth acer is writing 
uh, I'm going to say one, okay? And I'm going to save. When I'm going to save, it is going to do a put. So now it is uploading the entire file again to the uh, NAS. Now it is like that. I'm going to open the file with my uh, Surface computer. So you might see here, um, I'm going to get the file. I'm listing some XML information about the file, you know, like the creation date, the last modified date, and I don't, I don't remember all the other stuff. And I can other have a read-only copy or edit the file and merge my changes when the server file uh, with the server file when it becomes available and I would like to have a notifica notification. So I'm, I want to change the file. I'm going to collaborate with my friend and you see here it's uh, Acer is writing one. Now I'm going to say surface is writing is writing and on the Acer I'm going to put just below here on the Acer, I'm going to put uh, Acer is uh, writing two, and I'm going to save the file. Okay, so now you can see in the logs. Uh, if I here, I'm uploading file the uh, the file again um, with the put method. Now I go back here. I'm going to save the file here. And it's going to tell me that the upload failed because it is used by another user. So now I'm going on the Acer computer, I'm going to uh, close the file. And by doing that, it's going to send the unlock command. So now I can edit the file. But if you wait a little bit, here it's going to say, oh, now the file is available. Okay, so I want, I'm going to save it. It's going to refresh and um, and change everything. So I'm going to save the file. And now, as you can see, I have Acer is writing one, Acer is writing two, and Surface is writing, okay? So that's, it, that's how it works. But the software has to be compatible with all those commands, okay? Um, the collaboration doesn't work with any kind of files or uh, program. I'm going to show you. So now I'm going to close the file and unlock it. And I'm going to do the same th the same thing with a uh, text file on the Acer computer. I'm going to open it. Okay. I do not see, as you can see here, you do not see any kind of lock feature. Okay. Lock uh, uh, word, verb function. I don't remember the name. So now I'm going to. Uh, this is a test. Okay. This is a test on the text uh, file. I'm saving it. And now what you have is a lock put and unlock directly after I save the file. That is very important because that means that my file is now open. There is no lock, which means that someone else can be editing the file. And with saving the file, I can override his changes or have some, some weird uh, behavior. I had some weird behavior where sometimes it was not uh, it was not at all um, updating the files, so I don't really know where, from where this came from, but it was not working. Well, it's not a collabor collaboration uh, suit. Now, uh, yes, I wanted to show you again something else. I'm going to open the Word document on the Acer. Uh, so we will have the lock, uh, which will come. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think it's this one up. Oh, I think it's this one. Okay uh, Now I'm going from the surface from this computer. I am going to uh, Delete the file. Okay, as you can see up oh, would you like? Yes, it's deleted and now it will say It's sending the delete command with a status code four two three Okay, so now what's happening? I just refresh the page and the file is still there. So you can see that's, that's good for collaboration. Now, of course, it's limited because, well, it's not a real, uh, real time co um, uh, collaboration program, you know, uh, working like that. But now you can see how everything works. Now, in terms of security, we say that it's safe, it's fast, it's reliable. 
um, it's good to be used on the internet because you can also have a reverse proxy with application, firewall, network intrusion, antivirus, etc, etc, etc. Now, there is something that I discovered two years ago, which I'm of course not the only one, is the uh, WebDAV cache on the computer. Okay, so there is a cache here. And this cache, the problem <laughs> is that it keeps, sometimes it keeps a copy of your files um, without deleting them. Normally, after it uploads the changes, it needs to delete the file. And here you can see it's not the case. The file is still here. You can open it and you can see what has been written. So it's not always uh, the, the latest version. Sometimes it's the, the, not the latest, but you know, just the version before. So it means that if someone steals your computer and that is not protected, you, th you think that your data is safe on your NAS and you don't care about the fact that someone stole the computer but if they can be admin of the computer they can go to this uh, path and see every kind of files that you have opened with webdav so this is the this is the thing to keep in mind in terms of security but this is more of a uh, microsoft uh, problem uh, anyway, it works also well with uh, Mac OS and smartphones. If you would like to have uh, web devs with smartphones, it works great. Well, I think that's it for this uh, protocol. I hope that you have enjoyed the video and if you have any kind of questions, please feel free to ask. Bye-bye.